Senior Report thanks Edmund Besch of Bristol Burgess Insurance Agency, 65 East Main Street, Westfield, for his generous grant to provide news to seniors. Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Funding for Senior Report is provided in part by a grant from Andrew Goodell, Assemblyman for the 150th District of the New York State Assembly. Senior Report with Reed Powers thanks Westfield's Schultz Chevy for a generous grant to inform seniors of important news. Over 50 years of service to Westfield by Chevrolet, Schultz Chevy across from the school. The physicians of Jamestown Primary Care are happy to sponsor the Senior Report. From the Access Channel 5 television studio in Mayville, it's Senior Report with Reed Powers. Senior Report is broadcast live throughout northern Chautauqua County on Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. each week. Call in and share a thought, make a comment, ask a question, or simply wish someone a happy birthday on Chautauqua County's only live call-in senior program. Since 1995, Reed has been bringing viewers hundreds of interesting guests informing the community on a variety of subjects. Here's the host of the show, Reed Howard. And good morning. What a lovely day, really, in Chautauqua County. We're finally getting temperatures above freezing anyway, and it looks like things are thawing out just a little bit. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we have a great show coming up here. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a very basic uh, chemical, uh, an element called oxygen. <laughs> you need it. And a lot of people don't get enough. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that. We've got a specialist here in terms of the business, Galen Zook, who's going to tell us all about it. And he'll answer your questions if you have any. If you're breathing hard, we'll understand. <laughs> you can call the number is 753-JACK or 753-5225. Anytime during this program, which is taking place Saturday morning from 9 to 10, every Saturday morning. And this one is the 22nd of February, of February last Saturday. Okay, talking about things going on around us, uh, I watch the television regularly and I see the White House decided to stop fighting. They're going to just use presidential fit or presidential proclamations now. <laughs> Whatever uh, Obama wants, he'll simply say, it's a law because I say so. <laughs> the heck with the Congress, I don't need them. Um, he just signed a bill which uh, cut back food stamps 10%. How about that? For the good of America, it says, the good of the country, uh, well, let's see, that means that the poorest people, the children, the senior citizens, more and more being pushed onto the Medicaid rolls, um, are going to get 10% less to eat. So you eat 10% less. They uh, gave billions and trillions of dollars to the rich and powerful bankers, and what do they give to the average guy, the poor person, <laughs> the children <laughs> who have no money? Uh, 10% less food. Kids, you're going to have to eat 10% less food now. Thank you, Congress and uh, the President and all the people involved who are taking care of uh, the rich and powerful, but not the average guy, you and me. Um, I don't know. They're, He's got the new budget, I see, and uh, they did pass a budget of sorts. But uh, the funny thing is they don't tell us what it includes. <laughs> There's no information about the budget. We just say we're going to have a new budget. It's going to be billions, trillions of dollars or whatever. But I will tell you what we're going to use it for <laughs> later. <laughs> Maybe we'll never tell you. <laughs> you just find out. Um, 
I don't know. This is a this is funny thing. The, the funny business going on in Washington is unbelievable. Um, Tom Reed is our representative, and uh, Robertson, who's running against him, is is uh, attacking him from the right and the left and the up and the down <laughs> all over the place. Um, we don't hear too much from either one, though, excepting just uh, you know those those little snippets that you see in the press. All right, we are going to. Uh, take a public service announcement time, and then I'll give you some senior news. This is for you, friends. Passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. How about that, the Coast Guard? If you want to serve in the United States Armed Forces, join the Coast Guard. That's the easiest and the best. <laughs> Just float around in a boat. <laughs> yeah, real easy. Can't, can't go wrong. Uh, Lakeshore senior citizens, I wanted to make a note of them. President over there, Stella Mikulak, and... Uh, they, uh, they, they do a lot of hard work. Uh, they have uh, potluck dinners regularly. Uh, they're going to have one March uh, 17th, and that's that special day. I know they're going to have corned beef and cabbage and potatoes. St. <laughs> Potty's Day. And they have another one, uh, the potluck dinner, April 30th at the center. You know, potluck dinners, you bring something to pass. They have a basic dish usually provided by the, the center, and uh, bring your own dishes, or your own silverware usually, so they don't have to fiddle with that. You just take it home in a baggie and wash it up. Sinclairville seniors, they have a, a very special group. You know, they, they deliver um, Meals on Wheels over there. Can you beat that? I mean, this is a small private group that does a heck of a lot of work. Uh, the uh, Elaine Palmer Titus is very important. They had a soup dinner, and she made the master soups, <laughs> the stone soups, you know, where you throw a stone in and other things. February 27th, coming up, uh, is the wedding anniversary of a very special couple, Phil and Sherry Shea, who have been very, very involved in hardworking over there at that, that crowd. Um, they had a teach, show, and sell program, a show program of all kinds of wonderful stuff. Uh, if you want to join them, March 11th is their next meeting. And they meet at the Sinclairville Fire Hall, usually, and they have a dinner. And they're going to be celebrating that special day uh, a little early, but it doesn't matter. There'll be corned beef and cabbage dinner. <laughs> Bring something to add to the meal, like a good dessert or whatever. I don't know what the traditional St. Patty's Day dessert is usually there's no room. Maybe it's beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 50 plus. Nah, they're so far away, I don't think I ever mentioned it. <laughs> they're way down in, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, Dunkirk Seniors, a very important crowd around here. Incidentally, they are, they have the wonderful site. If you want to meet with your seniors, get in touch with them. They have an old school, which is just fantastic, up on 4th Street. And it has hallways you can run in in the winter, and it has a fantastic setup for the seniors. It's just really great. They're going to also, the uh, Dunkirk seniors are going to have a potluck dinner for March 17th. <laughs> Sign up at the center. And April 30th, I might add, <coughs> at 5 p.m. Big bingo. They're playing big bingo now. Big prizes. Check in, get some, uh, get some dates. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am finished with the news, they tell me. My time is up. There's no more fussing around loud, no more news, no more nothing. So we're going to close down, and we're going to uh, have our guest come on. Now, John Hamels may call in, incidentally. He's, uh, he's visiting right now. He gets away occasionally. He's got a bunch of kids <coughs> and grandchildren and everything, and uh, as we all do, and we have to take care of them occasionally. Um, <laughs> I must say I've got a bunch of beauties. Okay, 
Um, Galen Zook is a long, long time. He has quite a career in uh, oxygen therapy. He is not an official therapist himself, but he does a lot of the work. He delivers. He, he helps out. And he has extra special jobs to do, one of them being when he visits a senior, he sees how they're doing, you know. He has regular uh, visits, and if they're not doing well, he would report it. And uh, they, they've got somebody at least they can talk to every day. Uh, and so Galen, tell how often do you deliver to somebody to somebody's house? It probably depends a little bit, doesn't it? Well, it depends. Some people mm -hmm. use more oxygen than others. Some people only use oxygen at nighttime while they're sleeping or during the day when they take naps. Um, but it is <coughs> a lot of people don't realize how important supplemental oxygen really is, um, because some of the people that I've dealt with. Once we've set them up with oxygen, didn't even realize how bad they were feeling until they started feeling better again. And uh, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's, it's a very important thing. Uh, well, yeah, without oxygen, uh, you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, you have a problem breathing without <laughs> oxygen. Yeah, and some people cannot supply enough oxygen themselves. No. Why not? You know? Well, what <coughs> what happens is over, and, and a lot of it's caused by secondhand smoke. I've had some people that I see that has never smoked a cigarette in their life, but yet have emphysema or a COPD, which is very similar. What happens is the lungs lose their ability to stretch. They lose their elasticity. So even though they're taking a deep breath, they're not getting as much um, oxygen into the lungs, so there's not enough oxygen to to be transferred into the blood system. So what, what we do is we have uh, machines that produce their own oxygen, and it's uh, normally administered via nasal cannula. What's that? It's I didn't think to bring one, but it's a tube that goes in your nose, uh -huh. and um, oh, those little clips you see in people's yeah, noses. Yeah, yep, it goes around the back of the ears. Uh -huh. And what that does, the machine makes it, makes its own oxygen. So the, once we put the machine in the home, it just wants you to plug it in, turn it on. We can regulate how many liters per minute that the machine produces. And um, what it does, it, it gives you extra oxygen so that there's more oxygen in your lungs so that it can transfer into your, into your bloodstream and keep those oxygen levels up. Well, the... Uh Normal oxygen is a little over 20% right. of the air you breathe. Right. And this will jack it up to what? Um, what the machine produces is about 99% pure oxygen. Going in your lungs? Going in your lungs. You think it'd make you silly. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> some people are silly enough without it. <laughs> but so, so, some people are silly because they need it and they just don't realize it. And once they get it, they... I mean, it doesn't. It just doesn't affect your, your lungs. It, it affects your whole body. Um, because what it's doing is making all your your heart, your liver, <coughs> all your vital organs makes them work harder because they can't they don't have that oxygen that's that that the body needs to to really function properly. So um, you get people, oh, I really don't need it, but yet when they when they do the testing and everything, um, it really shows that their oxygen levels are low and their body is working really hard and the way the body is designed <coughs> um, excuse me when you go to sleep at night your heart rate slows down your um, your breathing gets shallower so so you're not drawing as much oxygen in <coughs> so that's why if you're if you're not using oxygen you wake up tired and sleepy and like you've never slept you haven't slept all night the reason is is because your body's not really resting. Um, what what's happening is your heart rate. The body senses low oxygen levels, so it the heart rate starts to elevate again. Your breathing starts. So really, you're not resting that much. You're running it like it's daytime, huh? Right. Full, full so, force. So that whole time that you're 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 sleeping, but you're not really resting. And there's there's other reasons and there's other therapies, other than oxygen that that can help that, which we're going to talk about as uh, as the show goes on. Uh -huh. But uh, we as as a company we deal with 
mostly just with respiratory issues. But um, personally, I have I have uh, sleep apnea, and what ba basically well, tell us what is sleep apnea? Okay, sleep apnea is, and it's not necessarily a big person's condition. We have we have people that are use uh, CPAP therapy that are 110 pounds, tiny people. What it is is um, in the back of your throat, your soft palate is connected to a muscle. And during the day, the muscle is tight and, and functioning so your airway stays open. At nighttime, that muscle relaxes and your airway actually collapses and you stop breathing. Um, so all those, all those of you out there that your husband or your wife snores and s wakes up gasping for air, there is a problem. You need to get that looked at and get tested to find out. And once you get the testing, they have what's called a, a CPAP. It stands for Continuous Positive Air Pressure. And I wear a mask that goes over my head and covers my nose, and it basically blows air down my throat to keep my air passage yeah, well, open. How do you sleep with a mask on and all that? You get used to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, huh. took, it took me a little while, but once I started sleeping with it all night long, it was like I could absolutely, I could, it was like night and day. It mm. made such a big difference for me. And, uh, um, it actually has helped me with my energy level. Um, some people, well, if I use that CPAP, I'm not going to be able to have much energy. Well, that's quite the and, and that's quite the contrary because without the CPAP, you're going to have a lot less energy. Um, that, uh, and again, it, it goes back to the same thing with with lung disease. Your body's not getting enough oxygen, so you, you your body's not resting. So You're, lung disease, they blame smoking for a lot of it. Right. But there are other causes of it, aren't there? Um, sure. There's asthmas that uh, uh -huh. that develop that Asthmatic. have developed into to uh, things. But um, in the old in the older days, the old the uh, the, the coal miners they had, would they contracted what's called um, black lung. Black disease. lung. Yeah. There's meso. Philoma, which is the asbestos. Yeah, I see all stuff. the lawyers are pushing for yeah. lawsuits about mesothelioma. Yep, and uh, yeah, lung cancer, sort of. It's it is. Yeah. It's what happens is the asbestic asbestos particles get into the lungs, and it destroys the cilia that's in your lungs, and then and you can't expel those those particles. So eventually, it, it basically does the same thing as as emphysema. It, detracts from the lung function. So whatever asbestos you inhale stays with you, huh? Pretty much. Yeah. Like That's why they're so concerned like invaders, about it. It's you know? Yeah. <laughs> whatever happens in your lungs stays with your yeah. lungs. <laughs> well, that's that's one reason they're so so big on that. I can't, it's really hard for me to say, but the, the asbestos stuff is because it's, it is very dangerous and it's very, the particles are so small you can't really see them. And who knows, I, I spent 17 years in the Navy, retired from the Navy. Actually, my officially be retired 15 years on, uh -huh. on the 28th of oh, this month. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you all out there that have served also. Um, I, do, I do run into a lot of vets yeah. out there. And it's, you know, you, it's kind of fun to sit down and, and talk to them when I get a chance about some of the things that they did while they were in the service and some of the things that I did. and how it kind of correlates. And well, they say uh, in the ads I see for the mesothelioma, if you served in the Navy. Now, what does that have to do with asbestos? Okay, bec that's where my whole point with being in the Navy was going, because the older ships, yeah, when they, the hot water pipes and, and all the insulation used to be made out of asbestos. Uh -huh. So even, even if it's not falling apart, brushing against it, releases particles into the air and, and you just breathe them in and so even though that you may not have seen the particles they're still there and um, as as time went on they discovered the problems with asbestos so they started tearing it out of the ships and tearing it out of places and and that's why and the older it gets the more fibrous it gets and the more particles that come off it so 
if you know of somewhere with asbestos, get rid of it best you can or call get someone to come in and get rid of it. No, they find asbestos everywhere. In the even in tiles on the floor. Uh, yeah. On the shingles on houses. Yep. It's all over the place. It was it was a very versatile thing, but they yeah. didn't just like a lot of things, didn't realize how dangerous it was. I mean, I remember, I, I, I can remember seeing old TV commercials about cigarettes and how good they were for you. Well, <laughs> the filters. 30 or 40 years down the road, now <laughs> they found out that they're really not that, they really weren't that good for you. So, <laughs> um, well, they did, I did know that they did have asbestos in the filters. Mm, which, really? Yeah. Which wow. uh, was all the better for uh, spreading it into your lungs. You yeah, know? exactly. Best is uh, abatement. Big deal, very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can barely, most old houses have asbestos in them. Either right. in the tiles or the shingles, or the, uh, the ceiling tiles, um, which isn't quite as dangerous as the, 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 the uh, open stuff that they put on pipes. But, right. Because it's basically sealed into the ceiling, mm -hmm. into the tile. tile. But uh, it is there, right? But and you, you you know how it is. They they find out something's bad for you, and sometimes and I'm not saying all times they go they do a little overkill on on what they want to do. But even in my business, there's in my my field, there's things that the the government has come up with that are just like really <laughs> absurd, <laughs> and, huh? Yeah, it's just. Sometimes it's a some something happens obscure somewhere, and they have to come up with a safety rule for it, and, and it's like it would happen one once every a hundred years, you know. And it's like, yeah, but it could possibly happen, and like the the moon could fall on your head too, you know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> something like that, you know. Yeah. I got enough head to. <laughs> well, I saw uh, recently in in the uh, in the paper there was an article about. Some EMTs that were carrying a woman uh, down out to the uh, to the emergency vehicle, and instead of using a stretcher, they they kept her in her chair mm -hmm. and it moved out. But unfortunately, one of the guys slipped, dropped the chair, and uh, broke her back. <laughs> and oh God, what a scene that was! You know, yeah. Uh, they're suing them, of course. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, and you know, kind of back onto the yeah to the uh, the oxygen therapy and. Um, oxygen's, we have, we also provide uh, nebulizer therapy. Now what's the difference between that? Now nebulizer therapy, yeah. neb a nebulizer is just a small little machine and most yeah. people with emphysema or COPD, 99% of them mm -hmm. will have one of those. Yeah. Um, COPD is a progressive disease. What does COPD? A COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Oh, I see. It means it's all the time. Yeah, it, right? it, it means it's going to get worse. It oh. doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't go away. Uh -huh. um, some people get oxygen and they think, well, I'm going to get better. Mm -hmm. uh, oxygen doesn't cure. Just, no, oxygen doesn't cure. There is no oxygen. cure for COPD. Uh -huh. Once you have it, you have it, it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Some people progress more quickly than others. Uh-huh. Some of it is how diligent you are with, with your therapy. Um, exercise helps with COPD because it helps keep your lungs a little more to keep that elasticity longer. But nebulizer therapy, um, normally a person with, with asthma will just have an inhaler, something a little puffer, take a quick puff. Uh -huh. What a nebulizer is is that same medication, but it's administered through a machine and each treatment normally takes around 10 minutes. Can you, oh, you, can you carry it around? Is it portable? Well, there, we do have, uh -huh. the, the industry does have portable, uh, portable nebulizers. Insurances will pay for a portable nebulizer. What they don't pay for is the battery. Oh. But they come, Which they, is probably the expensive part. <laughs> a battery runs around 100 bucks. Uh -huh. And, um, but the thing is, with the portable nebulizer, you're provided a power cord that you can plug into the in at home, and a power cord that you can use in the car. And does the battery recharge? I'm sure it has to. Yeah, if you get a battery, it, it is rechargeable. Uh -huh. um, but like I said, we have yet to find an insurance that'll pay for pay for a battery. 
Uh, that's weird because, I mean, you do need one to use your nebulizer. Well, no, because you get uh, the power cords, the two power cords that you can plug into the wall at home and plug into your right, car. Right, but if you're not going to stay <laughs> by, your, by your plug, you've got a yeah. problem, huh? Well, that's the thing. If people really, we do have people that really, really want the battery, so they'll, they'll go and they'll pay for the battery. For it, huh? All yeah. right. I see. So most people choose not to because you know, a, a, lot, a lot of times they're going to be somewhere where they can plug in. Uh huh. Either at 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 the at the in the waiting room at at the at the doctor's office or something somewhere they're ninety a lot of times they'll be or if they just go back out to their car and do their treatment there it doesn't take that long so how often do you do it well it depends the uh -huh. doctor will prescribe it there's there's some medications out there um, uh, that are steroids and those you do two times a day. Mm -hmm. And then there's other ones that if people, personally, I, I use inhalers, and I can't use the steroids because I've been on them, and it actually makes my breathing worse. Does it bulk you up a little? <laughs> What's that? Does it bulk you up a little? No, no that, that's, from, <laughs> that's from good eating right good there. Eating. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking uh, to Galen Zuck, who's a uh, specialist who delivers oxygen and uh, gets people cranking with it and knows all about uh, oxygen problems, lung problems, COPD and whatever. And anybody who wants to call in and ask him a question or has a comment on this, 7535225, and I see the, the red uh, button is going, so somebody's trying to get in right now. But in the meantime, uh, Galen, uh, is this expensive? Say you, you need oxygen now, uh, what, do you, what do you do? You call up the oxygen company and say, send me a couple of bottles of oxygen, right? Or what do you do? Uh, no. No, you don't <laughs> do that. Um, there, there are several ways. Medicare and, and almost any insurance has the same, same qualification standards. Your oxygen level has to drop. Well, hold on. We've got a phone call. Sure. take that first? Yeah, go ahead. Because uh, we're, we're just talking about oxygen has to drop now. Caller, you're on. Yes, I was just wondering, do you provide like service in the middle of the night if some piece of equipment goes down? I know my uh, brother had a nebulizer. He went down in the middle of the night. They had to call someone out from Erie or something. Yes, we do, uh, we do have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week service. Um, and that's, we try to limit that to, to emergencies only, but obviously if a doctor calls in or a hospital calls in and... Um, uh, we get quite a few calls from Five Star Urgent Care. I'll put in a plug for them. They're uh, they're a very good organization. They're very easy to work with, and um, they're very very cost effective for the for 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 people. Was that a uh, wagon or what? No, Five Star Urgent Care is down in Brooklyn Square. Uh -huh. It's um, well, it's wherever, Brooklyn right Square. across from Brooklyn's quite a distance from here, though. Near in the City. old hills, isn't it? No, Brooklyn Square is down in Jamestown okay. where... Uh, right, but there used to be a hill there. Uh, no, you're thinking that's over on Fluvanna. Um, they're down by the Tim Hortons, down by the Cycle Shop, down by Friendly's. There's a Chinese restaurant there. It's in the JAMA building is where it's at, which is down on Harrison Street. And that's emergent care. And then are, are late night services, do they cost more or do insurances cover them? Say if your machine broke down in the middle of the night. Oh, no, insurance has nothing, yeah, we don't, that's not, the only thing is sometimes we have people that like to, would like to call all the time about just little stuff that weren't really emergencies, and then we have the option to bill them a service call, but in, in which, which insurances won't pay for, but um, as a general rule, and if it's a legitimate thing, we will not charge a service call for, for, having to come out in the middle of the night. And then is, is this very similar to other companies that do this same service? Um, I can't. I'm not going to comment because I really don't know. All righty. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, caller. Uh, send in a stamped self-addressed box and we'll send you a nebulizer. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't work that way. <laughs> An old one that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, back to qualifying for oxygen. You were asking about um, qualifying and uh -huh. how you get oxygen. Um, you have to go to the doctors. Well, we can, we can right, do, do some... You know, you know you're having oxygen problems. How do you know? 
Um, well, you'll be short of breath. You'll be wheezing. You could that could come from drinking too much. You could sound like me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're wheezing. You're short of breath. You have trouble going upstairs. Yep. Um, so so, that, you, so you call your doctor. You call call you, the doctor. We don't call you. No, we don't. They don't. We can't, we can't do anything without a prescription. Okay. Um, now the doctor can. What he can do is what we also what we also do is we do. Um, we have what's called a pulse oximeter, and what that does is test the oxygen levels in your in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. We can deliver a, a pulse oximeter. the The client will wear it overnight, and then we'll pick it up and we download it to a independent company. Oh, it's all computerized then. Yeah. Oh. Um, we as a company cannot qualify someone for auction because Medicare looks at it as, and rightfully so, as a conflict of in interest. What we have to have is a pulse ox that records information and is uploadable to the internet. Uh -huh. Now, the, a lot of people have pulse oxes. They do not record and they cannot be uploaded to the internet. The reason we can do that <coughs> is because we, can, we cannot tamper with the results. All we do is drop the pulse ox off, pick it up, upload it to the company. We don't re read the results. We don't even see the results until they, they're uploaded to the to the company, they send the results back to us. That's so you won't declare everybody on earth in need of a, your auction, right? Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> if we could go in there and tamper with the results of the test, we could, it would be possible for any company, not only the company I work for, to uh -huh. change those results to build the business. Mm -hmm. And people do tend to forget that even though we provide a service a, a life-giving necessary service we are still a business so you know we get a lot of people well I can't afford to bill and but that's a whole different subject we won't get get into that too much but um yeah well it, um, uh, you can you can see there might be a conflict of interest yes uh, there and uh, you want to make sure that everything's on the up and up and right. straight especially if somebody's got to run around the rest of their life uh, right, exactly. Pay for auction. Right. Which is free to most people. I'm, I am i don't pay anything for mine. No, me either at this point. But um, but we have, to, there's certain criteria that Medicare has lined out. Basically, you ha your auction level has to be below 88% for a total time of f over five minutes throughout the testing. That is very low. That's very low. Considering most people's oxygen normally runs 96, 97 yeah, percent. Right. Well, as an EMT, Excuse I me. remember the details. If somebody had 80, we'd go into panic. <laughs> yeah. Well, at that point, once we get that, those test, the doctor gets those test results, then he'll write a, a prescription for mm -hmm. normally standard two liters per minute, eight hours a day, or while sleeping. And uh, I, when I go out and set set it set set someone up um, I learned I've learned a few lessons over the years what did um, we learn what did we learn I've learned to let people know that even if they take a nap during the day uh -huh. when they have oxygen say they take an hour hour and a half nap that they should use their oxygen at that time even though it's only prescribed supposedly while sleep or at night mm -hmm. well the big lesson I learned is I had a, a client that kept ending up in the emergency rooms because his oxygen levels were dropping off, off the floor into the basement. So I asked him why why he does it, and he's like, and I asked if he was using his oxygen while he was taking his three hour naps, and he's like, well, no, you only told me to use it at nighttime. Mm. So he's taking these three hour naps during the day and not using his oxygen. His oxygen levels are dropping down into the seventies. So. <laughs> Yeah. Lesson learned there. And um, it just goes to show you how quickly your auction levels can, can drop. Well, I see a lot of people, more people than in the past. When I was a kid, nobody had auction. But right. they have those little things on their nose now with the tubes and everything. Mm -hmm. So I assume more people, one, need it, or number two, more people have access to it. Well, I think it's, I think it's both. Um, you're starting to get into the age of the baby boomers and you're getting that generation that believed that cigarette smoking was good for you. And 
these are the guys, these are the people in the in late 40s, early 50s, and, you know, these are the ones that we're starting to see. And that's the beginning, that's right in the middle of the, 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 the baby boom, baby boomers uh, time period. So, you know, and as far as accessibility, the, uh, there's, there's companies out there that are cranking out these machines, and uh, there's just more and more people being sick. Um, also, uh, it doesn't have something to to the, due to the fact that our population is aging. Right. You got, and it, this seems to be an old person's disease. I, I guess you don't have too many young kids that run around um, with a clips on their nose. No, not really. It's the older folks that are uh, hitting this uh, stage when the, I guess the smoking's caught up with them after right. a while, you know? Right, exactly. Um, what we see a lot more of is the younger kids with, with uh, asthma issues. Asthma. So, what's the old... It, what's asthma? What causes asthma? That... I couldn't tell you. I really don't know. Huh. I believe I have asthma because of secondhand smoke. Although I was a smoker at one time, I only smoked for about eight years. But I was around a lot of smokers, <laughs> and uh, this was before. This was before the uh, all the laws about smoking indoors came about. So it wouldn't be unusual for to go to a restaurant and you sit in a sit in the restaurant and you'd sit, be sitting in a uh, haze of blue smoke from all the other people smoking around you. Um, I didn't used to think secondhand smoke was that bad, but over the years I'm really starting to see uh, more and more people that have these lung diseases that have never smoked. And it's from secondhand smoke or from whatever. And it doesn't matter where you get the smoke, it still does the damage. And, um, and that's where nebulizer therapy comes, comes into effect in, in, in conjunction with the oxygen therapy. Because what these, they, what these drugs are called, they're called bronchodilators. And what they do is when you, when you breathe these in, it stimulates the bronchial passages and the bronchial passages open up so that you can draw more air in. So that's what the nebulizer does. That's what the nebulizer does. You got another call or two. You want to take one? Sure. Okay, good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. Hello? Guess they really didn't want to talk. Yeah, I guess that caller's uh, just not going to wait forever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, caller. Call back in and we'll take care of you. Don't worry. I'll get you on immediately. Um, so you were talking about the uh, nebulizer and the fact that it expands... Right, well, the but, lungs. but it's, it's not permanent, so that's why they got to take, um, like I was saying, the, the steroid is usually normally two times a day, and then um, the most common is albuterol, ipotropium. These are the chemicals that they put into you? It, yeah, they're an act, yeah, I don't know if they, how you would, it's a drug, basically. Mm -hmm. And all these things that, that we're talking about, we don't, we need a prescription from the doctor to, to do. So, yeah, you can call us up all you want, but just because you want something doesn't mean you can get it. <laughs> well, uh, I could go down and buy a bottle of oxygen anytime I wanted. No, you can't. Sure. I, I got a torch. I use it for uh, uh, welding. Yeah. Well, this is different. This is uh, uh, what we use is considered okay. a medical grade oxygen. Oh, okay. Which uh, is. You can't just sniff uh, propane oxygen. It uh, goes with a pro propane torch. No. Okay, we got to, the caller's back. Hi, caller. Hey, good morning. Uh, crazy cell phones, anyway. So, I'm, <laughs> how you doing, Ray? I'm um, Galen. Um, I was wondering, I uh, see a lot of people have these portable oxygen tanks they carry around with them. Uh -huh. um, I guess my biggest concern on oxygen tanks is explosions, fires. Um, uh, okay. I know I think people smoke around them. Um, <laughs> will an uh, oxygen tank just explode, or, I mean, you take it outside, you take it out in, um, like, cold weather, hot weather, uh, same in the house, your house temperature, um, okay. sort of a, just a concern, you know, that can one of these things explode if you drop it, or, I mean, some people just carry them in their hands, set them down, and um, <coughs> sort of a weird thing. Well, the common myth behind oxygen is that it will blow up. Oxygen is not flammable. Oxygen is considered an accelerant and 
Reed, Reed can probably tell you he's, he plays around with the oxacetylene stuff. The acetylene is what's actually burning. When you add the oxygen in, it makes that burn cleaner and hotter. A lot faster. And, and a lot faster. Yeah. You turn the acetylene off, you'll hear a big snap, and the, the flame will go out. If oxygen were flammable, that flame would still be burning even without the acetylene. What happens is people smoke with their oxygen on, and they get the, uh, the cigarette. The cigarette blows up. <laughs> the cigarette is what ignites and yeah. flames up, uh -huh. and is, it scares them. And what they normally do is they take a deep breath in, and mm -hmm. what they do is they draw all that fire right down into their throat and singe their lungs, which now they've really done some more damage. Um, in other words, don't smoke anywhere near pure oxygen. Well, gen general, general rule is, what's that? The tanks will not explode, like if you take them out in really cold weather, really hot, it's just... No, uh, um, actually, actually, I keep... I keep oxygen tanks in my van all the time, so even during when it was 23 below last week, the, the tanks were fine. Um, as far as heat, on the other hand, they don't. It's recommended that you do not put them in, in like leave them in your car where it can get up to about 125 degrees. But there are precautions that are taken. Those uh, those tanks are are tested. They, use, they, do them, they do ultrasounds on them now to check for cracks and leaks and stuff. But what they used to do is they used to pump water into them and pump them up to 5,000 pounds of pressure. And if there was a leak in the tank, that water would come out. Um, but they only, fill, they only fill the tanks with 2,000 pounds of, of air, compressed oxygen. So even if there is, they, even if it does expand, that that tank is is tested to a point where that that oxygen will never reach. Now, in the old days when they were using the cast steel tanks, they had a problem with the necks of the bottles breaking and then sending two pieces of and making two projectiles. They make rockets out of the tank, right? Yeah. Well, what they do Well, what they use now, they use cast aluminum now, which we don't it's still possible, but it's a lot stronger, and it's just it's a lot safer and a lot lighter than the old old steel tanks that they used to use. Okay, um, now what's oxygen do to you? I mean, I've been in the hospital before where they give you oxygen. You go out and you're all dried out. Your throat's dry for several days. Is mm -hmm. that just me, or is that normal for oxygen? Um, some some people some people do dry out when they use oxygen, and some don't. And we do have um, we do have bottles that we can connect to the machines to add moisture into the oxygen to help keep the uh, the nose from drying out <coughs> and and things like that. You know, um, this business has been around a lot longer than people realize. So um, it's gone from tanks to the machines, and things are still constantly being revised. Um, Sometimes we get machines and we think why the whoever designed it designed it the way they did because it just doesn't make any sense. But, you know, they get paid the big bucks, so we just got to deal with what we get. And you don't need any more to carry an oxygen tank around, though. You can carry a little gadget that makes oxygen, right? Well, they, Creates it. they have come out with the portable oxygen concentrators uh -huh. that you can carry around. But I will warn anyone out there that's watching that is thinking about and wanting to get a portable oxygen concentrator, they are not for everyone. Why not? Because, one, they are, they are typically heavier than the tank. Uh -huh. Typically, they la don't last any longer than the tank. And, you, and they, they do run on batteries, but you've got to recharge the batteries. And to do that, you've got to plug in. So they're not necessarily... the. the you see them on TV all the time where they're all out to the beach and playing golf and this and that and the other thing. It's like, uh, yeah. In, in reality, I took one to a lady just the other day. She looked at it and was like, I'm not used, I can't use that. She went to pick it up and she could barely lift the thing. And it was like seven pounds. And her tank was only five pounds. So, you know, what's, what's the advantage in that? I'm going to get, let you guys get back to the show. I guess probably the biggest thing you worry about in life is, you know, towards dying is all of a sudden you're not going to be able to breathe. Like, you know, that's like the 
it's just going to be worry, you know. You're going to die, you can't breathe, but uh, um, I have a can of Hawaiian air I bought several, <laughs> two or three years ago. That's going to be my last breath. But uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's probably made in Japan, but it says it's Hawaiian air, you know. But, uh, right. You know, I guess that would just be my biggest fear, you know. Just yeah. to get where you think you can't breathe, you get stuffed up with stuff. And it's yeah. Like, well, it's that's, scary. That's, that's where nebulizer therapy and, and oxygen therapy work hand in hand is to help open up your passages and open up your your breathing so that you can get that that oxygen that you need and eventually it's going to get to the point where it just there's nothing you can do and you know unfortunately we all we all have to die and i don't mean to sound morbid or or mean or anything but um there's a lot of people uh, suffering with this disease, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy because I can I see what it does to people, and it's it's just really a really nasty disease. Not well, thanks a lot. I'm gonna let you guys get back to the well, show. Thank you, thank you very much. information. Thank you. Yeah, well, send us a uh, stamped uh, a self-addressed box, and we'll send you a small tank of oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're talking to Galen Zook. Galen Zook is an oxygen specialist, he delivers, he sets up, he prepares, he supplies, he informs. And if you have a, a problem with uh, oxygen, do you have a phone number they can call you? Uh, I don't personally give out my cell phone number or my home phone number because... Well, how about your business? I can give that number if you, if you want. It's 716-484-1290. Uh, okay, so you need... Need information about it? Uh, I guess they can get in touch uh, yep. through you through that, right? Yep. yep. All right. Um, I, I I don't ever give out. Uh, you work for Lynn. Lynn Care. Lynn Care. Right. Yep. Lynn Care. And uh, Lynn Care is that local or is that all over? The actually, place Lynn Lynn Care is probably the. Actually, it is the largest auction provider in the in the U.S. We are nationwide. We have over a thousand centers throughout the throughout the United States. Wow. In all, in all 48 continuous states and one center in Ontario, Canada. How about Hawaii? Nope. No Hawaiian. Nope. That's why the guy who called him before he has some Hawaiian air. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> now there is, there are, if you are going to, if you do, we did, have had some people travel to Hawaii in the past. Uh -huh. And there is a company over there that will work with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you are able to, to get oxygen therapy in Hawaii, so you can travel to Hawaii even though you do have an air problem, huh? right? As, lo as long as long as you know, as long as you're not on 24 hours a day and you can't get a sufficient amount of oxygen to get you there, because you can't take the tanks on the plane, and that's where the port a lot of the portable oxygen concentrators are are best for is short term trips and that type of thing. I wonder why they won't let you take a small tank of oxygen. You don't know what they could. They don't know what's in it says oxygen, but you know with the terrorism oh. the way it is nowadays. Oh, so they're afraid of terrorists. Huh? Yeah. Ah. Not to mention everything has to be proved by the FAA, FAA, uh, yeah, the FAA and uh -huh. most tanks aren't. So if it's not approved to go on a plane, it's not going on a plane. So where the, where the, the portable oxygen concentrators, they're, they've been approved by FAA to, to go on planes. So, so uh, you better have one if you fly around then, huh? Yeah. Well, the nice thing about uh -huh. being a nationwide company is we can, uh, um, even for, for people driving from here to Florida, if they know where they're stopping at night, mm -hmm. we can contact the center that's in that area, mm -hmm. and they can provide a, a, a concentrator at the hotel for them, and we can provide a, a concentrator when they get to their destination. And our traveling program is totally free in, unless you are use the, the portable concentrator, and then there is a, a fee for the portable concentrators, and that's billed per weekly. Per weekly. And uh, But if it's just a concentrator and tanks, we can't bill for two machines. That's kind of illegal, so we just provide that as a the second machine at your destination as, as a... Uh, as a courtesy. And a lot of people would own their own too, right? They, yeah. They have the, not own it, but I guess they rent it or something. Well, actually, if 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 they, there are some people that have gone out and purchased the concentrators uh -huh. on their own, but if they have a problem with it, we are not obligated to, to repair it. We are not obligated to service it. We are not obligated to deliver any tubing to them 
anything like that. Okay, so you keep saying concentrators. In other words, it doesn't make oxygen. It squeezes the other stuff out, the nitrogen, right? And leaves kind you with just the oxygen. Pretty much. Yeah. It separates the oxygen from the nitrogen and mm -hmm. expels the nitrogen back into the, into the atmosphere and then concentrates the oxygen, puts it out through, and shoves it out through a little tube. Yeah, well, I guess most people realize that uh, the atmospheric air you're breathing and everything is 20% oxygen, almost 80% nitrogen. There's right. a little CO in there. Yeah, there's a little few minor other things stuff, in there. But uh, mostly it's all nitrogen and oxygen. Yeah, pretty much. It's, uh, it's four-fifths uh, nitrogen and two-fifths oxygen. A lot, of, a lot of oxygen in that air then. Mm-hmm. But you got to cut it out. You got to sep separate. Yeah, you got to separate. So that's it. what these little machines are for, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the nebulizer, right? No, that's the nebulizer. Just blows air. Okay. That's for the. That's for the. Just, uh, just blows it. That's for a different therapy, and that's all a CPAP does. Also, is just blows so air you down just your throat. Call it the action. Uh, the concentrator. Yep. Concentrator. And then. Um, ah. I see on your hat it says Juno. It says. Uh, Roswell. Ride for Roswell. What's that all about? The Ride for Roswell uh -huh. is um, a Roswell Cancer Center up in Buffalo every year, uh, midsummer. Sponsors actually, it's sponsored by West Her uh, <coughs> Auto Group. Uh -huh. What it is is um, <coughs> it's a fundraiser for for cancer research. Uh, myself and a couple other people that do this show have have ridden in it in the past <coughs> and uh i've signed up for it this year um our ca the cameraman randy burt he's going to be doing it i think uh, my brother jeff is going to be doing it and uh what you do is you go to the, to the website rideforroswell.org and then you can <coughs> if you want to sign up there's different lengths of bike or bicycle rides that you can do and it's a minimum of two hundred dollars. You have to raise a minimum of two hundred dollars to ride in a ride. What do you do if you have one hundred and eighty? Well, Keep I guess, it, I guess. I guess you, I guess you throw the other twenty in and go do the ride, like you <laughs> promised the other people that you're going to. <laughs> I've actually signed up to do the sixty-two and a half mile ride this year. That's quite a lot. Where do you go? Um, it starts at UB, uh. and it goes out. Uh, Akron Falls Park. Randy's doing a different one than I than we did last year. He's actually going to do a just a thirty mile uh, ride down by the Niagara River and through through Buffalo. He's pointing at Randy Burke, who he knows, and Randy is our uh, cameraman and specialist in uh, photography here. So um, the ride this year is June twenty seventh and twenty eighth. The, uh, actually, the 27th, they have an opening ceremony. Is that a Saturday, Sunday? So it's a Friday and a Saturday. Friday and Saturday, okay. Um, there was 8,000 riders last year, and they raised over $4 million for cancer research. Um, so if, if, if you are interested in sponsoring, I know I have set up a, a, a website. Um, you can just go to rideforroswell.org and search rider and search, put my name in there. And you can donate to me, or you can send a, I guess you could send a check here. Send If you want to sponsor Randy or my brother, you can send a check here to Access 5, and I'm sure they'll get it somehow. That's Box 88. Um, Box 188. So, yeah, it's, it was, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Uh -huh. I would encourage you, if you can, there's even a three-mile family ride. Um, it is open for registration. It's been open for about a month. And like I said, $200. There you go. You just got to raise $200. We just got somebody calling in to volunteer. Good morning, caller. Well, good morning. Good well, morning, Taylor. It's good to see you on the show this morning. I wanted to mention, Reed, yeah. how much Galen helped us. Uh, with Doug, with his uh, situation, he was just terrific, and thank you. I want to thank you on the year. Oh, yeah, did, did he give you some free oxygen? No. <laughs> it's Linda Spaulding. Uh, oh, okay. Hi, Linda. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. I was trying to trying to Doug recognize Spaulding, the voice. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah Doug. Doug was. Uh, Doug was a, a teacher up to Mayville School for many years, and right, he taught um, a lot. He, everybody knew him. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't... Uh, God bless him, may his soul rest in peace, and I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm sure he's in heaven. 
So, <laughs> are um, you sure? <laughs> 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 but yeah, I I, I I saw Doug quite often. Yeah, and, um, he's a good guy. Yep. And uh, he trained his dogs to play the piano. Did you know that? No. He, yeah. I know his dogs barked a lot. They sang a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he had a dog called Squirty, and Squirty could squirt and play the piano at the same time. <laughs> I no, don't even no. want to know what squirt no, is. No, he didn't. He was called squirty because he was so small. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was, was going to say, I don't squirt. even know. I didn't, was, didn't want to know what squirty was all about. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very talented musical dog. <laughs> yeah, well, he did play the piano. I know that. <laughs> he did. He did play the piano. I've got a black cat that plays the piano. He loves to play the piano. He, ever since he was a little kitten, 20 years ago, he used to jump up on the piano and play it, walk around, and he's gotten very versatile. He actually plays a little bit of Tchaikovsky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my cat likes to play with the computer when it's sitting on my lap. So, yeah, you know, mine too. <laughs> walk across it, and who knows? That cat can open windows that I don't even know how to open on my computer, and she'll walk across the computer, and this thing pops up. I'm like, okay, how do I close that now? <laughs> so... Well, there well you yeah, go. nice to hear from you again, Linda. Well, it's good to see you on the show. And the Ice Castle extravaganza was wonderful. Oh. They had a terrific turnout last weekend. Oh, right. You know, they were telling me, uh, Randy was telling me that people would take a quarter and lick it and stick it on the Ice Castle, and it's impossible to get it off just about. Everybody was <laughs> picking away at the coins trying to get them off. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I wasn't at I was not at the Ice Castle celebration. I was out doing. I was the actual the on call guy over the weekend, and I was pretty darn busy on President's Day. Let me tell you why. Well, that enough to give people oxygen problems. I had I set five people up with oxygen on huh. on President's Day. Huh. Good so Lord. I was. I worked twelve hours on on my holiday. So, uh -huh. but that's okay. It's it's like the one caller called in and asked if we go out and do things um, at certain times, and by all means, we stay out until things get done. So yeah, well, that was much more important. Yes, much yes, more it was. Go yes. <laughs> out of here. Oh well, my God! Have a great weekend. Just, just, bye well, bye. Thanks for the call, caller. <laughs> um, Gail and I want to give you just 30 seconds uninterrupted to close them out. Oh, she's 30 seconds. I don't have... I can, 15 seconds. Okay, because uh, I don't know what to talk about. We've talked about so much, but uh, um, I can't emphasize enough. If you're, if you're feeling, feeling like you, you're not sleeping, you're not resting, and you're, you're, you want to fall asleep during the day, there's two things yeah. you need to get checked. You need to get, get your oxygen levels checked, and you got to check... Get, and if you're snoring and you... And you're you're gasping for air when you wake up. You, you need, need to you, go. You need oxygen. Huh? You you need to go either get ox get tested for oxygen or get tested for sleep apnea. Okay, give me that phone number again. The uh, yeah. our office phone number is seven one six four eight four one two nine two. And um, there you go, Galen. You need to call your doctor first, though. Yeah, call your doctor, Galen Zuck. Talking about oxygen therapy, but a lot more we could talk about. We never really got too f deeply into it, but I hope everybody learned a little something about it. And uh, if you're having trouble <laughs> breathing, uh, you know you're going to need some oxygen therapy uh, well, if you're going to survive. Go just, I'm going to have to say goodbye to everybody. And you had one last second. I just, I just wanted to say how people, because I get short of breath pretty easily carrying that equipment, and I get accused of needing oxygen all the time. So, <laughs> okay, great. But, I want to thank some people here. Sure. Thank you, you right especially ahead. Gail and Zook. I want to thank Chuck Kelsey, Devin Taylor, Chris Burt, Randy Burt, Jeff Zook, Don Zenz, John Hamels, and everybody out there. Sorry, the last caller. We'll, we didn't have time. We'll get you next time you come back sometime. I uh, will. All right. That's all. That's all, all we got to say about auction. May all that is proud and true and noble abide with you. I'm Reed Powers. <laughs>